Hi, welcome to this uh, video where we will discuss a continuation of our introduction to option analysis or option theory. Recall that in our previous lecture last week, what we did was to introduce you on the mechanics of options, right? What is called option, what is a put option, where, when is it exercisable, when is it not exercisable? And what are the benefits of options in terms of uh, knowing the position or financial position and performance of a company? So with that introduction to how options work, we will now pivot to the next section of our uh, lesson, which is to value the options. Okay? As we mentioned last time, options are not free. They have a price. No. And just like any other asset which has a price, there's a valuation method or valuation methodology with respect to the valuation of these options. So therefore, this lesson will give you an overview of the uh, valuation of options and uh, therefore give you an idea of how to determine the price or, or the fair value of these options. Why is this important in our uh, lesson? This is important because, uh, as mentioned, we will transition option theory to the concept of real options. And in real options, we are trying to evaluate capital projects wherein they have option-like cash flows. And therefore, if projects have option-like cash flows, then we can use the same theories of option pricing or option valuation no? and use the same concepts to value that capital project rather than value it using a traditional discounted cash flow model. So that's where we are and that's what we want to achieve you know, in this lecture. Okay, so let's proceed. So let's have an example you know, here. The example that we have here is a Google call option. So for example, you know, Google is not traded anymore. It's the company's alphabet of trading. So this example is a little bit dated, but it's okay. It will serve our purpose. So for example, you own Google call options. And because it is a call option, what does it have? It gives you the right to buy an asset at a specific price. Okay. What is that price? The exercise price is $430. Okay. So $430 is, is the exercise price. Let us assume further that the price today of Google stock is $430 per share as well. Okay. So $430 is the price today and the exercise price is also $430. Okay. Assume further that six months from now, there are two possible alternatives or two possible uh, outcomes of the stock price of Google stock. It's either it will be case one or case two after six months, right? Let's look at case one. For case one, the stock price falls to $22.50. So from 430, six months ago, ngayon, six months later, the stock price has now fallen to $22.50 per share. With that, how much is the option value or the payoff of the option at exercise date? Well, the payoff is zero, right? Why is the payoff zero? The payoff is zero because you will not exercise the option because the option is out of the money. And therefore, it's not, does that make sense for you to exercise it? So, you will not exercise the option, you will let it expire, and therefore, the payoff that you get at the end of six months is zero. Okay? Waba? Let's go to case two. No? On case two naman, the stock price from 430 increases to 
course, 573.33. Okay? And therefore, there was an increase in stock prices and comparing it against the strike price of 430, you know that it is, the option is in the money. And therefore, if the option is in the money, what you will do is to exercise the option. How much is the option value at that time or the payoff at that time? Okay. The option value or the payoff at that time is how much? 143.33, which is simply 573 less 430, which is the strike price. Okay. So that's the scenario that we have currently. No? Now let's go and now let's go and determine how to value the option today. Okay. First, before we continue or we further discuss how we are going to value this option, the first way for us to value an option is by doing or creating what's called a replicating portfolio. Okay. Just stepping back, you know, under this um, under this way to value options, the basic principle or the underlying principle is the law of one price. Okay, under the law of one price, what does it says? Okay, what does it say? Two assets with the same cash flows should be priced the same. Okay. It's an, it's an equilibrium, di ba? Parang, um, ang ginagawa natin dyan, equilibrium. No? Uh, if you have asset A and asset B, they have the same cash flow characteristics. They have the same risk profile. Okay. Therefore, those two assets should be valued the same. Okay? So, yun yung underlying principle ng law of one price. At yung law of one price, that's the principle that we are using to value options using a replicating portfolio. Ano yung replicating portfolio? Remember, yung option, meron siyang two kinds of cash flows. Right? Under case one and case two. Under case one, the cash flow was zero. Right? Which is the payoff. Kasi it is out of the money. Under case two, that option value or the payoff is 143.33. Tama? Because under case two, kanina in the previous slide, uh, this is going to be exercised. Okay? So, yun yung cash flow characteristic ng option na to, ng call option na to. So, what we do in this case to be able to value that option, what we can do is we can replicate a portfolio of assets in such a way na makakabuo tayo ng portfolio that will limit the same cash flow profile of the option. So pag nagawa natin yung cash flow profile ng call option using other assets, okay, at pareho sila ng cash flow profile. So kung ano ang value ng assets na yun today, then yun din ang value ng option. So that's yun ang general principle ng law of one price and the replicating portfolio. Because we don't know specifically how we will value options directly. We do it indirectly by forming a portfolio of assets which will have the same characteristics, cash flow characteristics as an option. And then we will take the value of those, those individual assets in our replicating portfolio. At kung ano yung value nun today, then that's the option value today. Okay? So, very clear. So, just to understand that, so today, we don't know the value of the option. Right? But we have two cases, case one and case two. Under the option, ang cash flow ng case 1, 0. Under the option, ang, value, ang cash flow ng case, ng case 2 is 143.33. Okay, so remember that. So what are we going to do now? And remember, this is 
six months from now. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so what are we going to do now? Okay. What we're going to do now is to form that replicating portfolio. Okay. How do you form this replicating portfolio? So what you can do is to buy four sevens of a Google share now. Okay. And buy Okay, so okay, again, all right. So now let's replicate the portfolio. How do we replicate the portfolio? Okay, we replicate the portfolio by buying four sevens of a Google share and borrowing 181.58 from the bank at an interest of 1.5%. Let's take it as a given for now. Okay. So with that information, we want to know if this is what you bought today at P equals zero, what is the value of this portfolio at P equals six months? From now, okay. Now, if the stock price is three twenty two fifty, what's the value of this portfolio at t equals six months? Okay, the value of that portfolio is first the stock is valued one eighty four point twenty nine. How do I determine that? That is equal to three twenty two fifty times four over seven. Right. That's how you're able to determine. 184.29. Bakit 4 sevens? Eh, basta bumili ako ng 4 sevens share lang. Kunwari, pwede. Okay? So that's how we will uh, deal with that. Okay? Okay, next. Repayment of loan and interest. Remember, you borrowed 181.58 six months ago. Six months later, kailangan mo na yung bayaran. How do you now determine kung magkano yan? Okay? So therefore, what you'll do is you have to pay 181.58, right? But you have to pay the interest also, okay? And the interest in this case is equal to 181.58 times 1.5%. Because we're assuming that 1.5% here is a six-month interest rate, okay? And we're able to get 184.29. Since the value of the shares is 184.29 and the value of your borrowings is negative 184.29, then your payoff is zero, okay? Which is equal to the payoff of the call option. Baba? All right. We now go to case two at stock price equals 573.5. What is the value of this portfolio if 573.33 yung stock price? The shares will be worth 327.62. Paano nakuha yan? That's simply 573.33 times 4 over 7 because you only own 4 sevens of a stock. And that's 327.62. Alright? So with that, minus the loan, the amount of the repayment of the loan of interest should be the same. Diba? And therefore, with that, the total payoff of your loan is 180 of this portfolio is 184.33. And therefore, 184.33 is equivalent to the payoff of the option. Okay? 
So therefore, what we can what can we conclude? We can conclude that uh, the portfolio of four seven shares plus repayment of loan and interest at eighty one point fifty eight amount to be borrowed today. The value of this portfolio or the cash flow of this portfolio is the same as the value of the option. The same as that of the cash flow per, of the option. And therefore, the conclusion is that the value of this portfolio today is equal to the value of the option today. So to value the call option, okay, we need to get the stock price today minus the loan amount today. So in that case, this is the valuation of the option. How much is the value of the option today? We stated that it's for $30. Okay. And then you own four sevenths of a share. Minus how much is the value of your loan? 181.58, which is the amount borrowed today. Okay. With that, if this is the value of the shares, this is the value of the liabilities, and therefore this is the value of the portfolio today, okay? And therefore, it is also equal to the value of the option today, okay? So that's how we are going to replicate the portfolio. Okay, so moving on to the next slide. So, yung 4 over 7 na nakuha natin kanina, is that a magic number? Is it something that I just plucked in the air? No. Okay, the 4 sevens that we got is actually what's called the option delta. Sometimes it's called the hedge. It's called the hedge ratio, okay? It's also called the option delta. And how, to do, how do you compute that? The numerator is the spread of possible option prices divided by the spread of possible share prices. So under our example, the numerator is the option price. So that's 143 less zero, which is this one. The denominator is 573 minus 322, which is this one. And then you're able to solve that it is 4 over 7. Okay, so this dictates how much shares to buy in a replicating portfolio. So that you can do the same analysis as we did in the previous slide. Okay. So there, that's one way to, um, to value an option by replicating a portfolio with the same kind of cash flow pattern. Okay. The second way for us to, um, uh, to value stock, uh, the option is called the risk neutral valuation. Okay. What is the theory behind risk neutral valuation? If we are risk neutral, the expected return on Google call options is 1.5%, which is equal to the risk-free rate. Okay. Accordingly, we can determine the probability of a rise in the stock price as follows. Okay. So in our example, in case one, the return is negative 25%. How do you get that? That's 430, which is the, sorry, that is, Three to two fifty, which is the stock price after six months, divided by stock price today, which is four thirty minus one. Okay, you get that the return is negative twenty five percent for case one. On the other hand, for case two, what's the price after six months? Five seventy three point thirty three, divided by price today which is 5,430, okay? And you will get that the return under case two is 
Let me see. If these are the two possible scenarios for the return, under risk neutral valuation, ang sinasabi niya, kung ganyan yung possibilities ng return, the expected return okay, of, of, of the investor today should be equal to the risk-free. Okay. So kaya dito, ibig sabihin niya, expected return equals no, 33% times the probability na tataas yung price. Okay. Plus, 1 minus probability na tataas yung price times negative 25%. And this expected return in our example is what? 1.5 1.5%. So you have to solve for PU, which is the probability of prices going up. And with that, you will know that the probability of the price going up is 454. And therefore, the probability of the price going down will be 1 minus 0.454. So that's 540. Okay. Why is this important? Yeah. This is important because, why is this important? If this is the probability that the price will increase, when the price increases, there is a payoff, right? When the price increases. So payoff times probability of price increase plus payoff when the probability of when the price decreases times the probability of the price decrease this should be the value of the fall option okay let's go to the next slides for that so what now is the option value the option value can be valued based on the following okay Probability of rise times 143.33, which is the uh, payoff when the price increased. Okay. Plus 1 minus probability of rise or probability of decline times the payoff when the probability uh, when the price declines, which is in this case zero. So with that, we're able to compute 64.13 as our option value, which is the same as the replicating portfolio. Okay, so that's the second way for us to compute for the value of the options. No? So therefore, what did we get? No? At time equals zero, we don't know how much is the value of the option. However, at time, time equals six months, we know that there are two scenarios. The price will be, the stock price will be 573.33, wherein the value of the, of the payoff of the option will be 143.33. Or it will decline, or the price will decline to 322.50, wherein the value of the option is zero. Okay, so this is the value six months from now. So what we need to get is how much is it worth today? And there are probabilities attached to an increase in prices and probabilities attached to a decrease in prices. So we use those probabilities to be able to compute for the expected value of the option, okay? And that's what we are doing, okay? Next, let's look at the uh, put option case. Well, let's assume the same facts. So the strike price, is equal to 430 and the price today is 430 also. Same case facts. Same increase and decrease in stock price. 
Okay? With that, what's the change? The change is a case one, do naman na exercise yung option 1750. And under case two, when the stock price increases, do naman zero or um, option value. Okay? Now let's compute for the value of this option using a replicating portfolio. Okay? First is to compute the option delta. Okay? So, ganun pa rin. We compute for the option delta. So, spread of possible option prices divided by spread of possible share prices. Okay? So, the numerator, uh, ano yung spread of option prices? Zero and 107.50. Kaya siya zero minus 107.50 for the numerator. Okay? The spread of possible share prices is 322 and 573. Kaya yun ang nasa denominator. So with, with this one, okay, ano naman ang um, gagawin natin in this case? The option delta is negative 3 sevens. Okay? Negative 3 sevens. And therefore, how do you interpret a negative option delta? A positive delta, it means that you are going to buy the stock. But a negative delta means you are going to sell a stock. Okay? So, you all ang gagawin natin replicating portfolio in this case. Rather than buying a stock, we are going to sell a stock. Okay? Let's go to the next slide to show that. So, with a three sevens, negative three sevens option delta, it means that you are going to sell three sevens share of Google rather than buy. Okay. So when you sell three sevens share of Google or you commit to sell three sevens shares of Google, it means that you have to shell out 138.22 to do that. Okay. Bakit siya negative? No? Kanina kasi when you own the stock, okay, kanina kasi you own the stock, you bought it and you are owning it. And therefore, after six months, you the value of that shares nasa iyo. So the re value redounds to you. Okay? In this case, you have committed to sell a stock. So kahit anong mangyari sa price, kailangan mo magbigay ng stock to someone. No? Kaya siya negative. Kasi pag tumaas yung value ng stock, tumaas yung value ng ibibigay mo stock to someone else. That's why it's a sale of stock. And that's why it's negative. Okay? So, in the replicating portfolio, it's the same principle. So, under case 1, 322.50. Okay? What happens? You sold, you will sell 138.22 worth of shares, which is 3 sevenths of 322.50. Okay? Dito naman sa kabila, pag case 2, that's 3 sevenths of 573.33. Right? And then what's the uh, what's the kasi to be able to sell something, okay, you will lend money to someone. Okay? Kaya you will receive something in return. Right? Kasi if you're selling three-sevenths of a share, you have a receivable from that person and that's an inflow. Okay? So that inflow will be 242.09 plus interest. Okay? That's why in our replicating portfolio, the value of the repayment of the loan is 245, 245, which is the principal of 242 plus interest. And the total payoff of the option of the of the portfolio under two, these two scenarios is 107.50. And this is equivalent. No, equivalent to the payoff of the put option. Okay. With that, then you can use this portfolio to value the option. So the value of the put option is the value of the loan amount today, which is 242.09. Okay. Minus the value of the 
shares that you commit to sell, which is three sevenths of the current stock price of 430. So the value of the put option is 57.82 under this scenario. Okay, so that's our that's how we are going to value a put option. Okay. Okay. These examples are actually simplified versions. Okay. What is the problem with our current examples? Okay, the problem is this is t equals zero, then t equals six months is the exercise price. To be able to get the value of the call option today, what do we do? We consider two prices, price going up and price going down, right? Which happens six months from now, okay? But in reality, hindi lang naman yung dalawa ang possible prices, right? Six months from, from now, there is a multitude of other possible prices. Okay? No? So therefore, using this very simple two price model, no, is very, very, very simple. Okay? And not very robust. Okay? So ngayon, ano yung pwedeng way for us to remedy that, for us to consider more prices under the binomial model, okay? Under the binomial model, for us to get those, uh, those prices, so for example, t equals zero, t equals six months, okay? Rather than doing this, na merong case one ka at saka case two, rather than doing that, what we will do, is the following, okay? We will consider more prices by segregating or sub subdividing these six months into more shorter periods. So for example, kukuha ko ng T equals three months and T equals six months. And I will add on to the number of binomial trees that I am going to discuss or consider. So, for example, rather than idiretso kong T0 to T6, kung pwede kong gawin, ah, mag-binomial tree muna tayo ng T0 to T3. So, meron kang price 1 at saka price 2. Okay? So, o oh, eh, hindi pa naman may exercise at T equals 3, di ba? Okay lang yon. Kasi ang gagawin natin, magkoconsider pa rin ulit tayo ng isa pang set of binomial tree hanggang ma-exercise siya at t equals 6. So from price 1, meron ulit increase and decrease in prices that will be equal to price 1.1, price 1.2. Okay? Ito rin, yung price 2. Consider pa tayo ng dalawang prices. Price 2.1 and price 2.2. So ngayon, rather than isang diretsong option na ganyan, ay isang diretsong scenario na ganyan, we are now considering what? We are now considering four prices rather than two. And therefore, it makes our analysis more intuitive. Okay? In fact, pwede kong gawin. Gusto mo, tigitigi isang buwan. T equals one, T equals two, T equals 3, T equals 4, and have that kind. No? Of 3. So that pagdating ng T equals 6, marami kang prices na na-consider. And therefore, mas nagiging T, you know, yung analysis mo with, with respect to option pricing. Okay? So what we will do now is we will discuss what's called a generalized binomial pricing model. No? And that's what we will discuss in an Excel sheet that I will now share. Okay. 
So let us consider this example. Okay. So for example, for example, we have a call option and the current stock price is, sorry, and the current stock price is 322.36. Uh, okay. The strike price is 40 today. Okay. And we introduce one concept which is volatility. Volatility in this case uh, refers to okay, the standard deviation of the price of the underlying asset of the option, okay, right? What is that underlying asset? In this case, the underlying asset is the shares of stock. And therefore, volatility in this case, which is 40%, refers to the standard deviation in stock prices. Now, observable naman sa market. You can compute it no, sa market. Okay? That's the volatility and the risk-free rate is 10%. Okay? Right? Now, the objective is for us to price this option. This option has a maturity of 90 days. Okay? Pero ang pinapagawa sa atin is to subdivide those 90 days into three 30-day periods. Kaya ang period per step is 30 days. Okay? Right? Okay. So what's the first step? No? The first step is for us to draw the so the first step is for us to draw the binomial tree. Okay? So let's discuss this binomial tree para hindi kayo malos. Okay? Here, it's t equals zero for today. Okay? Remember that this option is exercisable only after 90 days. Okay? So yung mga payoff, nagmamatter lang yan after 90 days. Okay? But you were asked to segregate that 92, 90, period, 90 day period into 30, 60, and 90 days. Okay? And therefore, rather than yung original natin na diretsyong ganyan, yung binomial tree, ang mangyayari is, we will now have multiple trees so that we can consider more prices okay, in determining the value of the option today. Okay? So, yan yung itsura ng ating binomial tree. Now, the first step is for us to get the prices in this stock price chart or in this um, in this chart. Okay? So, first, alam natin today ang stock price is 36 or hindi natin nakalik. Stock price is 36 today. No? And therefore, yan yung price today. Kailangan nating i-forecast magkano ba ang stock price sa mga time periods na to at under the following scenarios. Okay? Let's look at T equals 30 days. After 30 days, the price will either increase or decrease from 30 days. Paano yan? Paano natin malalaman yun? No? Then after 30 days from B2, the price will either increase or decrease ulit. Paano natin gagawin yun? Wala naman tayong information. Doon lumalabas yung concept ng volatility. Okay? So, under the generalized binomial pricing model, merong tinatawag na D and U. Okay? Ano yung D and U? Ito yung parang index. This is the index that we use to forecast the prices 
at certain points in time. Okay? So, yung D is the index if the price will go down. So, from 36 to B2, what, how do we do that? Okay? We get 36 and, we'll to, and multiply it to D. Para makuha mo yung price D2. Okay? You know, mong U, ito yung price increase. Okay? So from 36, paano makukuha yung D1? Okay? 36 times U okay, will give you the B1 price. Okay? Kaya important yung concepts na yan. Okay? So let us check how do we really compute for Let's say, check how will we compute for D. Let's start with D. D is computed as D is equal to E, E as in yung E, the number, okay? Raised to negative volatility times square root of H, okay? Negative volatility, volatility is standard deviation ng stock returns. Ah, sorry, ng stock prices. Okay. H on the other hand is what? Okay. H is defined as the time per period or step. Okay. And this time is expressed as a percentage of a year. Okay. In our case, what is H? In our case, what is H? You know that the time per period is equal to 30 days, right? Ito. Okay. But we have to express it as a percentage of a year. So that's 30 divided by 365. And that will be the H that we are talking about. Okay. So let's compute for it. Okay. Makado ang H. Ang H is equal to what? 30 divided by 365. So that's 0.8.082192. Okay, and that is our H. So for us to compute D, ito natin siya ilagay sa taas. How do you compute for D here? So how do you compute for D? It's equal to E raised to what? Negative of the volatility times H and it's 0.9679. Okay, so that's the vol negative volatility times H 0.969765. Okay, so that's this one. Okay. Yung U naman is what is the index for price increases, which is equal to this. No? Basically, it's the same formula, pero sa halip na negative yung volatility positive. So that's E raised to volatility. Ah, sorry. Nagkamali ako. Times square root of H. So wag kakalimutan para hindi magkamali. Square root of H. Okay. So, pag you naman, how do you do that? E times volatility times square root of H. Okay. So, ano ibig sabihin nito? Ang pag price in Pag price increase or price goes upwards, ang index na gagamit natin para i-grow yung price is 1.121. Pag down naman, 0.89165. How do we apply it? So here, buuin natin yung presyo. So from T equals 0 to from T equals 0 to T equals 30 days, how do we do it? Price nag-increase down. E D36 times the index that we use for price increase. Okay? 
sa B2 naman, AD36 times the, the price that we use or the, the index that we use for price decreases, which is this one. So, ang interpretation dyan is after 30 days, the stock price will either increase to 40.37 or decrease to 30.0995. Okay. Okay ba? So ngayon, ang pinakaiba, dati, tapos na tayo dyan. But now what we should do is to compute for all other prices. So that we are now considering other prices in computing the value of our option. So let's finish it. So yung C1, ano yan? Hindi B1 times up. Okay? Yung C2, ano naman siya? Hindi B1 times down. Balik sa 36. Itong C3, ano siya? Hindi 32 times down. Yan. Hanggang makarating tayo sa T equals 19. So 45 times up. And then 45 times down. Then D3 is 36. So tayo. 28 times up. And D4 is 28 times. So here now are the prices that we will consider for the price of the option. Okay? Maliwanag ba? All right. So Hello. Okay. Maliwanag ba? So that's how we will do it. So now we know the prices. Alam na natin kung magkano yung mga presyo. Now we start valuing the option. Okay. Remember, under risk neutral valuation, what do we need? Okay. We need the probabilities okay. of the price going up and the price going down. Okay. Pag alam na natin yan, makukompute natin all others. Okay. So let's compute for it. Under the generalized option pricing model, Okay. Ito ang formula ng probabilities of going up or going down. Sorry. Yan. Okay. So, the probability of going up is equal to T, A minus D, yung D, na-compute mo na, right? Divided by U minus D, yung U at D, na-compute mo na. So, the only thing that is um, Different here is yung A, which is A E raised to R times H. So we just have to compute it. Okay. So ano ang A? A is E raised to R, which is the risk free rate, okay, times H, which is the number of steps. I mean the time, time in between steps. Okay. So that's letter A. How much is D? How much is D? D is the computer natin. Ito siya. Okay. How much is U? Computer natin siya. And how much is D? Na computer natin siya. Okay. So get the difference in the denominator. In the difference in the denominator. And how do you get the probability of up? Kunin mo lang yung quotient nila. And therefore, the probability of prices going up is 50.7%. Therefore, the probability of prices going down is 1 minus 50.7%. Okay? So, alam na natin siya. And therefore, we can start with our option valuation. Now, how do you value the option? 
Okay. How do you really do this? Saan tayo magsastart? Hindi tayo magsastart sa umpisa. Okay. Magsastart tayo sa huli. We will solve all of these nodes one by one. So, ganyan muna. Pakukuha mo yung value ng option dito. Tapos, ganyan naman. Pakukuha mo yung value ng option dito. And then, ganyan naman. Then, makukuha mo yung option ng value dito. Option value dito. So we start with the end of the nodes, end of the binomial tree. Once makuha mo na yung mga value as of 60 days, edi eh makukuha mo na rin yung value as of 30 days. Kasi may value ka ng option dito, may value ka ng option dito. So makukumpit mo na yung value ng option as of t equals 30. And same with B2. So kung meron ka ng value as of B1 and B2, then makukuha mo na yung value as of today. Okay? So that's what we will do. Alright? So, how do we apply the risk neutral valuation? Let's start with this one. Okay? Let's start with this one. Okay. Remember, the option is exercisable at Today, no? as of t equals 90, doon lang yan exercisable. Okay? So first, for you to get the value of the option as of C1, okay, what do you do? Tingnan mo muna yung payoff at t equals 90 days pag i-exercise na. Since this is a call option with a strike price of 40, so this is the strike price, okay? and it is a call option, do you think that the option is going to be exercised at this price? At this price? Yes, right? Mas mura bilhin through the option than the market. How much is the payoff? 50 minus 40. So that's 10.78. Okay? Pag naman dito sa second scenario na bumaba ang stock price to 40.3, exercise ba ang option? Yes. Meron ka pa rin ganansya na konti. 40.3 minus 40. And that now is the option value at T2. So, ang next mo kailangan gawin, magkano ang option value as of C1? Okay? So, under risk neutral valuation, what is the value at D1? 50.7. Right? What is the probability of prices going up? Nakompute natin yan. Ito yun. Okay? Therefore, multiply natin yan, similar dun sa formula, diba? to get the expected value of the option. Okay. How much is the option value at D2? Ito. What's the probability of prices going down? Ito. Okay. And therefore, we can get the probability adjusted. Okay. And therefore, you can now compute what's the option value at C1. Okay? So the option value at C1 is simply the sum of this and this. Right? Pero tama na ba yun? Hindi pa tama yan. Because these are option prices as of T. This and this are option prices as of T equals 90 days. Okay? Pero ang kinukuha natin, value as of t equals 60 days. Okay? Ito ang kinukuha natin, t equals 60 days. Therefore, kailangan mong lagyan ng present value factor. Kailangan mong present value, yun ang kuha mong 5.65 dito. How do you do that? Okay? Ang present value na nagamitin natin, factor is t, okay? negative and raise to negative RH. So, this is the present value. So here, rather than summing up the two lang, you multiply mo pa yan. Times E raised to negative risk free rate times the H. And then, no, this now no, is the option value as of C1. Okay? 
kuha ba? So ngayon, na gamit mo yung same concepts as we, we had before. Okay? Now, the objective that we have on hand is to compute for the option value for every node. And let's do that. Okay? Now, let's compute for C2. How do you compute for C2? Edi kunin mo muna. Ano ba ang value ng option at D3, which is 32.1 dollars per share? Okay? May exercise ba yung option? Hindi. Bakit? The price in the market is lower than the strike price. Okay? So therefore, option value is zero. Okay? So let's compute it as of C2. Okay? Times the probability of up plus down times the probability of down. Okay. But remember, you have to take its present value. So times E raised to negative R times H. Okay. And that's the value at C2. Kuha ba? I hope nakuha ninyo. Kasi paulit-ulit na lang yan. Okay. Pagdating ng D4 at price 25, what's the what is the decision of the owner of the stock, of the call option? The owner of the stock, of the call option, will not exercise it. Diba? Kasi masyadong mahal yung strike price. So, zero rin yan. So, what's the value at C3? Actually, kahit huwag ko na i-compute, eh, zero yung up, zero rin yung down. So, therefore, at C3, the value of the option is zero also. Okay? So, yan. Makompute ko na merong tatlong possible ways, tatlong possible values, okay, of the option at T equals 60 days. Pero hindi pa yan ang kompletong story. Why is it not a complete story? Because that's a T equal 60 days. So tuloy pa natin, doon naman tayo sa second level. Dito naman, ito na mga trees na to ang ating kukomputin. Okay? So at B1, how do we get the value of the option at B1? Okay, di kukunin mo yung value of the option up Okay. multiply sa probability of up plus the value of the option when the price decreases times the probability of the price decreasing times the present valued factor which is E raised to negative R and that's the value of the option as of T equals 30 days at P1. We do the same for B2. Okay. Up, value of the call, up when the price is up, times the probability of prices going up. Okay. Plus, value of the option going down. times the probability of, of, of the price going down times E raised to negative R times T. And that's the value of the option at P2. Nasa T equals 30 days na tayo. So therefore, nag na tayo sa last leg. Uli na natin yung price value ng option as of T equals 0. Okay. How do we do that? Same principles. Okay. The value of the option if it goes up, which is 2.9 times probability of the price going up plus price of the option if it goes down times the probability of prices going down times the present value factor. There. 
Okay. Let's check. Baka meron akong mali. Sa mga formula, formula lang naman. Just to ensure that we are correct. Oops, sorry. Galaw ko yung screen. Oops, sabi ko na may mali eh. R H Yan. Okay. Memorize ko kasi yung final answer. Hindi siya eksakto. So ngayon, eksakto na. Okay? So there, we're now able to determine that the price of this option is 1.512. And we are now able to get the price as of t equals zero, right? So that's how you do option valuation using binomial trace. It's a little bit tedious, but it's actually very intuitive, okay? So I hope that you understood the concept and understood the general issues with respect to binomial pricing models, okay? So for today, we will stop with, bi with binomial pricing models. Next meeting, we will be discussing the block scholes merton model, which is a lot more technical, but we'll try to make it as simple as possible, okay? So for this week, you will have two videos. This is the first one. And the second one is an introduction to real options, which will be discussed by an external, it's an external video. Well, that's available via YouTube, which I think is very helpful to introduce the general concepts of real options. So that's also an assignment. Okay, so that's it for this uh, portion of the video. So um, thank you, and I hope you're able to absorb the general principles of binomial pricing of options. Thank you.